Hello guys, thank you for tuning into my channel. This is Azrael, Angel of Melancholy. Today we are going to be talking about tea leaf readings or castigraphy. Now, you can also use coffee grounds. When you're doing tea leaf readings, uh, there will there are people who are say that you can't use that you can't use uh, uh, tea bags. Well, the main reason why they say you can't use tea bags is because that shit is pulverized to like dust. And it's not that tasty when you're drinking that. But understand that you can use coffee grounds, which are pulverized, so you can use a tea bag. If, in my opinion, sometimes using a tea bag gives a better chance of getting multiple and different shapes because it's, it's hundreds of little particles being able to take whatever shape they want as opposed to just a loose leaf. However, traditionally, it is used with used leaf, loose leaf tea. Uh, an Earl Grey is, for example. Um... So what you do is basically, I'm not going to show you how to brew tea. You guys should know how to brew tea. A lot of these Tassagraphia uh, how-to videos, they brew the tea and they actually have the tea. I'm just going to explain this to you because it's so much easier. You're going to have a cup. Pretty kitty. You're going to have a cup and you're going to have a plate. The reason why you need a saucer is because after you, after you drink the tea, you're going to have about a tablespoon or so left still in the cup and you're going to swirl it around and you're going to add your last intentions to try to get information visualizing your question and then you're going to dump it onto the plate and let it drain you could probably have a paper towel left on the plate so you can just let that soak it up easy cleanup all right then you're going to have people who say that you're going to you know, touch it and get some visualization one more time about your question. I find this pointless because at this point in the game, and I don't mean to be rude by saying, saying it's pointless, but in the end, at this point in the game, dumping when you dumped out the tea, the stuff is already stuck to the side of the wall. Therefore, it's already taken its shape, so it's not going to change the shape after you do this. That's why if you want that last intention, you should swirl that cup around strongly with that intention in your mind. And then dump it. All right. There's something called the Cup of Destiny. Cup of Destiny can be bought for various prices, overly priced, and it's basically it's a it's a teacup that has been given um, sec sections written on the cup to help and aid with interpretation. Well, that's fancy. I like doing the old-fashioned. <clears throat> Less expensive, more practical. Sectioning the cup. Because you already know what, what your cup looks like and you... It's a simple section prop, uh, sectioning process. All right. So, imagine an X. Hoop. Hoop. You know, across the cup. Hoop. Hoop. You have four sections. Basically an X. All right. On the top of your cup. An X at the top of your cup. Which makes four sections. And this is readed, read, this is read just like a paragraph. Now you could probably switch this up, especially if you're used to writing from right to left, like in some languages. But I assume that most people are watching this and they write from left to right. And that's what we're doing. Doesn't matter if you're left-handed. In my opinion, you should hold it with the right hand all the time because of this reading. After you drink, you swish and you dump. The cup is the, uh, the handle is on the right, the right side. And just like a paragraph, <clears throat> you start off at the left, and as you are reading, the very word that you're reading is the present. The words that you are not reading are now one or two, one that you've already read or one that you're about to read. So just like a paragraph, when you're reading left to right, the left is what you've already read the center, what's right in front of you, the part that you drank from, not the part away from you, the part that you drank from, is what you're currently reading, and what you will read in the future is the right, okay? Left, past, uh, front, present, right, future. It's that simple as far as what, when you see a symbol and it's interpreted on the left or the right, is it something from the past? Is it something from the future? Is it something from the present? That simple. But what about the front part? What's that represent? 
abstract thought, abstract spirituality, something that hasn't happened uh, to you directly in the present, but is influencing you in the present or in the future. That's up to the interpretation uh, interpreter if it's uh, the left part or the right part of that same part of the cup, okay? If it's in the front, it is spiritual or third party influences. That things are, are, it could be a person, it could be a situation created by people, but it's something that's influencing you spiritually or emotionally or physically with the main reading. So you got that left, past, front, present, right, future, and what's in front of you, abstract thought, possibilities that are influences. Okay. Now, what about timing? I'm not talking about the linear past, the present. I'm talking, what about, well, present, the future. <clears throat> when you look into the cup, it's, th you see the bottom. The first thing you, technically you see is the point of interest is at the bottom. So this is bottom of the cup, present, middle of the cup, future, the rim, a symbol that you see at the rim at the very top of the cup could mean distant future or a possible outcome uh, or, or possible situation, distant future, whatever. Now, the further you go off into the distance of something in the future with these kind of forms of divination, the less accurate it will become. Because just like a pond, when you see Ripples, you don't necessarily see the insect that made those ripples or the fish that came up and got a little insect or something, but caused disturbance of the water. You see those ripples? The further you go off in the future, there's more and more of those situations creating ripples. The harder it is to de determine where those ripples came from originally. Therefore, it's logic dictates the further you go off into the distance, you have hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people making decisions and actions and the one thing that you're trying to predict gets lost in all that information. So the further you're off in the distance, the less accurate, I guess, this tends to happen. Uh, uh, tends to be accurate. So the rim of the cup is best to say possible. But there's multiple ways of interpreting, and it's up to you. I will suggest that if you, you have multiple ways of interpreting a cup and you know different systems, Stick to the one that you started it with. If you don't like an uh, an interpretation because it's in a certain position of the cup, and you're like, well, if I interpret it the other way around or a different situation, this would be more beneficial. Don't do that. Because when you think about these questions and you do this, these actions with a certain method in mind, you already set the pattern. Uh, you see, the universe is going to try, try to talk to you in the ways you can understand. So... If you know a certain method and you're using that method, use that method. If you want to use a different method, start it over again. That's one of the things that I've learned through my experience. Is that again, if you think if you want to use one system, use that system. Don't change it to a different system after it's the the tea's already been drank and and, and so we understand that. Okay, so that's it. Quite simple. All you need to learn, basically what you mostly need to learn now is symbols. And like I said, uh, a simple dream journal can help you learn that. But one of the interesting things uh, that I do with tea that a lot of people might not know about is, let's say you see something in the future here. Let's say it's negative. You don't like it. Let's say it's a negative bat. There's a bat. Bats don't have... Have, have can have different meanings, but to me, this gave me a bad feeling, so automatically I know this is going to be a negative information based on the symbolis symbolism of the bat. Uh, let's say maybe in the future I'm afraid about getting a, a disease from somebody. Let's say, uh, you know, or a um, be rabbit, a bad situation. Yeah, you know, a bad situation. I'll take that, put my finger in this cup, and I will... Take that bat or that negative symbol, whatever it was, right out that cup, and I will use that those tea grounds as a link to that situation. And I'll go to my altar and I'll construct a ritual to help banish that, to help 
And once that's banished, I do everything in my power to make sure I stay away from toxic people. All right? Because, you know, it could, it's not necessarily a physical disease, but people can make you spiritual sick. All right? So say I, I see somebody in the future in my cup that might make me have a uh, negative influence. Well, one, I'll try to avoid all negative people, but I will incorporate that symbol. I'll take that symbol as a link towards that and then banish it. <clears throat> uh, or let's say it's the opposite. Let's say I saw what looked to me to be a cash register, which means I'm going to be in the money. Or I saw a dollar symbol. I'll reach into that cup in the future and use it in my ritual for prosperity. All right. That's that way. When, and through this method, when you find that symbol, you could protect you, you. You can use that same as a link to form a protection or banishing or attraction, depending on the situation. Uh, so it's really that simple. All right. Tea leaf reading. Oh, don't uh, starting out. Things are never simple. But it, once you understand the simple basics and you do it once or twice, you'll be surprised that these systems of divination might have got might have gotten you intimidated but it's really it's all about the hype that you put into that like wow uh, this is something that's more mystical than than I'm, I I I I realize but in the end it's not as mystical as you think because it's all you you're the one understand that you are the magic you are the mystical one and these things are happening around you because you're asking questions and you're asking for answers and the universe is materializing these through you. So don't let these systems of divination scare you or, or intimidate you. They are far, I mean, they, 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 at, on the surface, they look to be more complicated than they really are, but they're actually more simple. All right. Thank you for watching. And until next time, uh, before we go, consider uh, if you like what I do, um, that's fine. You can, that, that's great. Thank you. Um, me and the wife are actually trying to build a kind of uh, Animal Rescue, if you would like to help us out in that, consider looking down below. Uh, I, I hate asking people to donate for even for a good cause, because I, what I do in my videos, I do for free. And I do for fun. So, But we're, we're doing an Animal Rescue, and if you'd like, hit us up on Patreon to help us take care of animals. All right, uh, that, need, that need help. Thank you for watching.